we're rolling. Oh, uh, okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> welcome, welcome to my video. Um, we're going to be talking about unit one of the book, Popular World Music. Wow. And I invited Ali, Alison. She's going to help me. I'm going to have a conversation with her about the things that I learned. And Chris is our cameraman. Oh, yeah, a genius. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, we will be talking about some musical elements um, and we're gonna use the ballroom dance as an example. Yeah, so Alison is here because I feel like it's good to have a conversation to not, you know, get, I don't know, it's more like entertaining instead of me talking to a camera and nobody, nobody actually cares. So yeah, it's actually a learning process for me because honestly, like, I just learned this today like I did read the pages but yeah. yeah I know but and I did my research and we're gonna learn together okay I'm learning as well so yeah so we're gonna talk about some musical elements you know how we learn in unit one they try to place the um, examples of rhythm of uh, beat temp uh, uh, timber um, tempo all of that stuff and they use genres to to explain those so in the book they use ballroom day mm -hmm. dance okay so um yeah let's start so ballroom dance basically it was a social activity so like a very old old social activity it was like a way for people in the community to interact so it says it says in the book that it was um uh, people from different social classes but every time i hear ballroom dance mm -hmm. i just think of this very like um, prestigious and like people oh, in yeah, wearing yeah. dresses and all that stuff I'm like yeah that's like different social classes yeah sure but I feel like th like the the guy was talking about in different parts of uh, of the world you know and and yeah people do get together to dance and I guess that's that's uh, another term for ballroom yeah. dance it's not only like the the core mm -hmm. thing, but that's what I think when I when I when I think yeah. of ballroom dance. Doing ballroom and not the dance. Part. Exactly. So so yeah. So basically, it was a choreographed um, couples dances. So it's usually um, very like organized, very pre-established with choreography and everything. And it's like the woman and the girl dancing and blah blah blah. You know, it encouraged socialization and um yeah if people participated for social interactions so i hope our, my cameraman doesn't get tired because i'm gonna talk a lot <laughs> so yeah okay so yeah i think about elite high status very elegant um but i'm gonna talk so they the genre the music genre that they use to explain ballroom dance in the book is waltz okay so waltz Waltz uh, is the music genre, the classic music genre for ballroom dances. So we know waltz, we, um, we think of the one, two, three, one, two, three, and that's correct because it's a consistent waltz. Okay, so I'm going to, like the elements of music that I'm going to be talking today are um, beat, tempo, um, and rhythm. Okay, so it's a very consistent waltz. Um, and on the book says that it's hard to listen to the beat because specifically um, walls and like um, yeah this genre is specific and the song that they actually use um, there's minimal precaution so there's actually no precaution to mark the beat but every time I hear this type of music is just I feel like it's so easy to identify the beat. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's a constant beat. It's not like free rhythm and I'm actually going to play it for you because I do want to compare what is uh, the rhythm, um, the pulse, the constant pulse in waltz and free rhythm music because they actually mention free rhythm music. Um, so I'm going to show you. That's funny because uh, I closed my tab, but... Um, we are professional people in here. Of course we are. Um, Sarah, bear with me. So, yes, this is a song that I learned and played for the first time today. My smile is stuck. I cannot go back to your frowning. My spirit's made 
Oh god. Yeah. Okay, yes. So you can actually like you can identify the poles, but it doesn't actually like it's really confusing when it comes to the specific rhythm and um, I guess this the specific meter, you know? Um, because we do know pulse, meter, and rhythm are two different, like completely different things. But yeah, waltz when it comes to meter, um, we know that is a very specific, is um, established and divided in multiples of three. So it's usually like the three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, make, making emphasis on the one. Um, and okay, since it's very related to dance as well, of course, the dance has to do, it has something to do with the meter as well. And that's so interesting because without knowing music, just watching a video or just watching people dancing, you can identify which is the strong beat just by looking at the people. And I feel like we should dance. I feel like we should try to do waltz because it's so interesting as well. Of course, it is a popular genre and we think, well, we don't listen to it in the radio or we don't listen to it. Um, we don't actually go to Spotify. You never go to Spotify and be like, oh, I kind of want to listen to Walt's music, right? Like nobody do, like nobody does that. But, uh, you know, but but it is really famous. And, and in my perspective, like honestly, so in South America, we do have like those quinceañeras, you know, like mm -hmm. that, like that's very stereotypical. We do have that, it's so, like a very special occasion. and. I feel like we don't actually know why we do this, but we do it because it's so traditional. We dance walls with our dad and with our own male um, family. So if I did my quinceañera and I did like a huge party and I invited my grandpa, my uncles, my male friends, I had to, I had to dance the walls with my friends. Like if I, if I was 15 and Chris was my friend, I was like, hey man, so you have to come to my rehearsals because we're gonna fucking dance the wall. Oh, sorry about that. Because <laughs> we're gonna dance the walls in my quinceañera. And he can say no because it's like, it's my quinceañera. Isn't that so interesting? So, yeah, I actually, I actually danced the walls with my dad and I didn't know what I was doing, but we're gonna try to do it, Ali, you know? Okay, yes. Um, and yeah, so this is gonna be amazing. Okay, I'm gonna, because yeah, I really wanna show you. First of all, like the culture of aspect of it, like how do they dance and also trying, we'll try to mark the beat when we dance it and you are actually going to notice it. I'm going to use the example that they use on the book. It's called The Last Walls. Um, Fred and Ginger is uh, the story of Vernon and Irene Castle, uh, the movie. So yeah, okay, let's do it. Oh. So I'm just gonna. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. So she's gonna. She's gonna leave me. Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's so funny how I have to count to focus more on the. So yeah, you can see that, this, that the big steps are on the one, and the other two, you cannot even identify them. Thank you so much, Ali. So I do want to show you though, because they're professionals. So yeah, that's when the, um, the tempo changes, but you can see how the big steps they make. They make them on the, on on um, beat two beat one. Sorry. So yeah, um, that's actually something that I also wanted to mention. You can see how I guess on this song. So you can you can tell that the meter is very like is is consistent, but the tempo isn't. Um, and I feel like in walls not to because you want to provoke something. You wanna you wanna make the other person feel something you have to change something mm -hmm. and the um, change in tempo is very is very noticeable specifically yeah. in this song you can tell like it starts one two three one and it's like one two three 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 one two
like, whoa, like party started, and that makes sense because we're in a on a party at the end of the day, you know? So yeah. Awesome. So yeah, this is the example they use in uh, they use uh, um, on the book, but we also know that ballroom dance is not only walls. Mm -hmm. So ballroom dance that happens in around the world, you know? So another um, genre for uh, ballroom dance was tango. Tango. Or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, but tango. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's another music genre that was like very famous in ballroom dances. Um, that was like very predominant, specifically of course in South America. And I do want to talk about it a little bit. So, okay, yeah, so the history of waltz, let's just mention it a little bit. Um, it originated in the 13th century, I think, and it, um, it comes from Germany, okay? It came from a, a folk dance, and it then, it then went to Vienna, Austria, blah, 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 blah. Um, but, so it was like from Europe, and Europe got like really passionate about it. That's when the, the form that we know now, the three, four um, form that we know, it got really famous and it started to develop not as a folk dance, but as a chord dance. As mm -hmm. I said, it's not, it's, it's for a reason that w when we think about ballroom dance and waltz, we think about uh, like formality and dresses and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, tango. So I was listening to tango today and I noticed that it's definitely not as consistent when it comes to the meter, when it comes to um, the tempo. Um, even though it's, it doesn't make like this huge tempo changes, it is, it's, it's not that as consistent. And it was kind of hard for me to identify if it was a 2-4 or if it was um, a 4-4. Four four. But definitely, Tango is very famous for his... Uh, Duple, that's how you say it, duple, duple, um, you yeah, duple form, when you mean like 4-4, four, 4-8, four, um, four, yeah, so tango is, um, um, it's very, it's very, uh, it's very common that it has like this, this, um, meters. So we're gonna listen to Por Una Cabeza by Carlos Gardel, and this song is very famous. So... say um from tango to, to to waltz some similarities i do think it's a very formal very elegant tango is a very sensual um very sophisticated uh genre musically speaking and um uh dancing wise you know it's very elegant and it's interesting because it originated in the working class parts neighborhoods of argentina specifically in buenos aires and uh, montevideo uruguay uh, in the lower class, I think it was in the 1870s, 1880s or something. Um, it derives, I think, from Argentinian milonga and uh, habanera from Cuba. Um, and yeah, and it's very interesting. It actually, it originated in Buenos Aires, but it was actually because of uh, the European uh, migration to South America, to Argentina specifically. And uh, actually, some people describe it as um, some people describe it as a type of flamenco. So that's very interesting. It's like it, they say, like it's a Spanish tango. It's a light-spirited variety of flamenco. And of course, they would say that because it's it's it actually sounds like it. And um, since it comes from uh, from Europe, it's like the, the roots at the end of the day. And because of people migrating there, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so uh, what else? Uh, what else can I tell you about ball dance? Um, mm, okay, yeah, so famous people. Famous people related to 
Tango, Carlos Gardel. He actually was born in France, very interesting. Um, because yeah, we're just talking about how this came from Europe and emerged from there. Actually, when we listen, when it comes to instrumentation, yes, I forgot to mention that. So Wolves instrumentation are um, strings, uh, woodwind instruments, uh, piano, and uh, tango is also strings. The violin is very prominent and it comes from Italy. Um, old, old, old tango actually didn't have pian uh, violin until uh, Italian people came and incorporated it incorporated it now it's really famous and it's really uh, prominent in the form that we know it now um the uh what was it oh my god i cannot believe it. i forgot the name uh el bandoneon the, uh, how do you say it in english ben bandoneon 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 okay yeah which is different from the accordion because the accordion has these uh keys uh in which you can play it when you push and pull um but the Bendonian ben yeah. ben has uh, these buttons that you press and that's very famous when it comes to um, tango music so yeah so yeah we talked about meter we talked about so actually the video just stopped which is funny because that was actually the end of it I think that's all I have to say about uh, ballroom dance and the things that I learned the elements of music that I learned um, I, this was actually very helpful to learn a little bit more about tango and just like listening to it and paying attention um, And yeah, this was yeah. really fun. Thank you so much. And thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Ali. And thank you, Chris <laughs> Thank you Bye